Hi, Kate. Congratulations. Thank you. Are you still like on a high, like a wedding high? Yeah, we just came back from Niagara Falls on yeah, you did. You guys Sunday. Niagara? Yeah, just like a, a one night thing, but that's where he proposed. So we went down and we walked up the falls and then we retook our engagement moment photo. Stop it. It was really <laughs> cute. That is adorable. How long have you guys been together? Like, how long was your engagement? Uh, our engagement was just over two and a half years. Okay. But at the end of November, we will have been together for seven. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> so it's been a long time. Yeah, but you guys already know you like each other on that whole thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's> <laughs> I think I like you. Yeah. He can stay. <laughs> he can stay. Do you have headphones in or just the cast of your butt? I've got my headphone in. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone tonight. Uh, 
um, if you guys don't have anything else to input, whether it's about questions or anything else right now, we have a little bit of a shorter training, so you guys have to do that if you are. I'm actually going to go ahead and get to the training. We're going to do something a little bit different tonight. So um, get your notes ready. Megan, I know you take virtual notes because you're not necessary. Um, but we are actually going to be listening, hear me out, to a podcast together. I'm going to share my screen. There's no visual to go along with this. It's literally just an audio training. But you guys, I listened to it today, and I was like, I can't say it better than you can. Like, I can't put it more eloquently than this guy can. And honestly, I'm kind of just doing my own work. But anyways, it's been several weeks in a row of just talking. <laughs> um, so I wanted to sort of take a break for that. So if you guys don't have any other things to add, I'm going to go ahead and start it. If I remember how to do it, yeah, start it with that. Oh, look at all those trees. Whoa. So how do I do that, guys? How do I do that? Hold on, hold on. Ah! I'm going to take it away. So I just clicked the door. Y'all, like, don't have anything for backup. <laughs> like, this is what we're doing, or we're not. So, is this the team you're on right now? Is this your best plug ever in your business or not? If you can say so far, like you feel something up.
Hey, Kate, we can't hear anything. Nope, not at all. <laughs> it's like a, a humming. Can hear it now.
lobbyists are always focused on the past. They're held back. They don't have a vision for their future. They hope things can be better, but they don't really believe it. Or they're really lacking. And that's probably the number one area that hobbyists are. They lack belief in themselves. They lack belief in what they're doing. Hobbyists always deal with self-doubt. They're constantly comparing themselves to others. The other fatal flaw that I see so many hobbyists make is they spend all their time consuming training and doing personal development, but they're not spending nearly enough time implementing and taking action on what they learn. Now, I bet if you are struggling in your business, you relate to a number of those things. And what I would hope to open you, your eyes up to is that you're probably stuck in the hobbyist world. Now, listen, I'm not doing this to try to get you to feel bad about yourself or beat you up because some of you just didn't know, you didn't realize. Well, I hope that this is a light bulb moment for you and that I can begin the shift to help you really begin to create the results that you want. But it's an important thing to understand because it, to me, it is the answer as to the reason why most people fail in network marketing because they never think about what they do as a business. They don't think and act like a business. They treat their business more like a glorified lottery ticket. Most people's, you know, mindset when they join their business is great. I always wanted to join a business and I'm really ready to sacrifice time and do all that hard work up front of working on myself and facing my fear and acquiring new skills and getting out there and talking to hundreds and hundreds of people to get this thing off the ground. I can't wait to do that. That's not what most people do. Most people that join your team, here's what's going on in their mind. Oh, man, I don't know if this thing's going to work. I've never done anything like this before. I mean, I only signed up because I like the product. I mean, it literally wouldn't leave me alone. So it was just easier for me to buy from her. I mean, heck, worst case scenario, I get a discount on the product. I guess I can think of one or two people that might want to do it. So let me, let me give this a try. Let me, yeah, I know she said there's a training, but, you know, I got, I got to finish up that Netflix show and, I probably won't make that training, but I'm going to just go out and I'm going to do this thing. We'll see what happens. That's how most people start business. So should it really be a shock that most people fail? See, here's the shift that every one of you needs to make if you really want to be successful. You have to get out of the hobbyist role, and you've got to start treating what you do like a real business. You have to start thinking and acting in a totally different way. And when you do this, you will be absolutely astounded and shocked at how quickly you start to make money. So let's dive a little deeper. I want to even go a layer deeper, and I want to even present this from a totally different fact-based logic point. This idea of the fact that most people never really start a business. Okay. So here's the thing. I think we have to first and foremost we have to acknowledge the fact. Okay. Look, I'm here to present both sides of the argument, but let's just acknowledge the fact. You don't have to look any further than any company's income disclosure statement to see that people are really, technically, they're not wrong when they say that the vast majority of people fail. They don't make money. You know, I think that the, the percentage probably differs depending on the company, but there's the vast majority of people, they do fail. Like, you cannot argue. And I'm sure you've seen that in your business, if you have a bigger team, there's probably only a small percentage of people that are making money, maybe 10, 15% at best. Uh, maybe you have some kind of superstar leadership team that listens to this and you get hired. But I'm just telling you, the vast majority will fail and they won't make money. So here's the question we have to ask ourselves. Does that mean that network marketing doesn't work? Not at all. See, those statistics that everybody, all the Every hater in the world wants to quote all the time are very misleading and they don't even come close to telling the true story of our profession. First off, like I mentioned earlier, here for many of those, right, people, when they did join, their attitude wasn't, hey, I'm gonna start a business and do all the hard work. It's like I'm gonna see if this works. I'm, they purchased a glorified lottery thing. They were nothing more than a preferred customer that wanted a discount on the product. They didn't join with the intention of really doing what it takes. And the thing is this, is they never even started a business. 
let me share with you. Let's talk about small businesses because that's what we are. We are a small business. Network marketing, we are a small business. Let's look at some statistics. Okay, I'm going to share with you some statistics that were from the Small Business Association, okay, which is the main association for small businesses. And I'm going to quote you statistics from 2016. Over 6 billion small businesses started. Average amount that business owner had to borrow in order to start that business was $100,000. Almost all of those 6 million people will not earn a profit until they're 30. And if they, according to the SBA, if they even break even on the first year, it's considered a huge success. Most small business owners work 50 to 80 hours a week. They invest heavily into their own training and development and business skills to the tune of easily tens of thousands of dollars. So imagine this, 100 grand just to start the business, and you know you're going to be investing tens of thousands more just to learn how to get that money back and hopefully someday in three years be successful. And you want to know why? This is totally accepted and embraced by anyone and everyone. It is normal. That Those are the expectations of building a business. Now, here's what's so funny. Does that sound like a lot of the people on your team that are complaining to you that they don't make any money or telling you or your friends and family telling you they tried something like that and it didn't work? Of course not. This is not the mentality. This is not the expectation of what we do for someone. Right? Anybody you know that's talking bad about this profession, I can almost guarantee you, they purchased the lottery. They hoped that this thing would work for them called your company or whatever, but they never fully embraced the idea or concept of being a business owner, of what it means to be a network marketer. It was more like, hey, let me give this a try. They certainly were willing to commit to the process of building the business, to put in the necessary time and effort in the early stages, right, to work so hard and not get paid. Look, you all know what I'm talking about. Look, if you're successful, you get it. You're like, Bob, I get it. I work, the amount of work, time, and effort I put into my business and myself in that first year, I didn't get paid anywhere near that amount of time. But the beauty of our profession is you can get on the other side of that. You treat it like a business and it acts like a business. It is one of the best businesses in the world because of the freedom it can give you. But here's what's funny. Think about it like this. With what I just shared with you as the backdrop, could you imagine a traditional small business owner who was sitting in the back, getting ready to sign those loan papers for $100,000, probably putting their house up as collateral for their retirement account, getting ready, about to commit 60 hours a week for the next year, knowing that they might not even make any money, right? Hoping, right, that they make money, telling the loan officer, yeah, you know, I'm going to just give this a try and hope that it works. No, of course not, right? Like, but this is people's expectations. They join a network marketing business. They put in minimal work. They want maximum results. And I bet you, when you look at the, all those people that tell you it's not going to work, or, you know, the 90, 95% of people that didn't make any money, I bet you a large percent of them, easily three quarters of them, literally never did a thing other than watch a video or two and try to reach out to 10 of their family members or friends before they quit. They never took responsibility for their own success. And at the end, it was easier to blame the profession than it is for us to say, yeah, it's not that network marketing doesn't work, it's that I didn't work. Right? They didn't show up with a commitment to learn, grow, and get better. They didn't put in all that hard work up front to get the business off the ground. They were to embrace their own comfort zone. They weren't willing to risk the uncertainty of sharing themselves and, and getting you know, people looking down on them because they were doing something like this. They weren't willing to do that. And that's the reason why they failed. So here's an even scarier question that I want to ask. Does all of that that I shared earlier, does that sound like you? See, for many of you, you might not have quit yet. But you might still be stuck in that same hobbyist role with some of these same tendencies. 
And I just want to share this. I want to shoot you straight. For many of you, it's time for you to look in the mirror and really get honest with yourself about the way that you've been showing up in this See, Because until you face the reality of where you are, you take total 100% responsibility. You're never going to make change. See, my argument is this. If you could break out all of the people that do treat network marketing like a real business, that actually are willing to do the work, a far greater percentage of them do see success. Now, what's success? I don't know. Maybe success to you is just making enough money to go out on a date night with your husband and wife once a month. And that's a huge deal to you. Maybe success to you, to you is not is being debt free. Maybe success to you is much greater than that. Maybe you aspire for the financial and the time freedom and changing, you know, millions of people's lives. Maybe you have bigger goals than your I don't know what success is to you, but here's the thing. When we look at the people that really do what it takes, those are the ones that we need to focus on. And I'll tell you, what I'm sharing with you today, this is the secret to this profession. One of the best parts of our business is also one of the worst ones, right? The investment for somebody to start a business is so low. In most cases, anyone can do it. And that's great, but that's also the problem, that anybody can do it. And listen, what I want you to share, what I want to share with you is this. Whether you started out with the vision and intention of building a big business or not, you're here now. And I know that means you're ready. And look, I get it. You've never done anything like this. Right? You might be a, a house thinking, who am I to think I can be successful, that I could be a leader and build a business. Look, I got this for you. Who are you not to think that? Like, straight up, you are a child of God. You are uniquely created in his image. You have gifts and potential inside of you to do things that are so far beyond your comprehension. And you're so caught up in your past limiting story, you can't even what's right in front of your eyes. You have an opportunity to go out there and share a gift with people that can literally change their lives if you can just get over yourself. You can do this. You will do this. You just have to start examining the beliefs that you have about yourself, about what it is that you're offering people. And if you can make this decision to get out of the hobbyist to stop blaming others for your lack of success, to take responsibility, to hold yourself accountable, and finally start thinking and acting like a real business owner. You start treating it like a business, it will start acting like one. It will start paying. Your team will start growing, and you will finally start to see the results that you've been struggling to create for so long. Here's what I believe to be the first step for many. Okay? If you are listening to this at the time of this being published, Make sure you register and join me in the Love, Serve, Grow Challenge that's happening literally in just over a week on September 24th. That's when it begins. It's a four-part, three training series that I have. Here's the reason why I do this. If this has been a light bulb moment for you, this episode, if you're realizing, Bob, I'm a hobbyist. I get it. I, I understand. I think the special gift that I have. I appreciate you being here. I'll yeah. see you soon. Okay. Hey guys. Hello. We're going to be here to act now without the control team. Can you hear me all right? Sorry, Kate, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me okay? Without the headphones? Oh, I can now. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Okay, what did you guys think of that? I listened to him like almost daily. So I think he was like, he's been watching me and he knows. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, it's creepy how accurate that was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah, so I mean, yeah, honestly, like, so true. I still think it's still habit to do Yeah, like, I was shocked that was like crazy. Cody, what did you think? the same like yeah. wow it's like he was talking directly to me <laughs> <laughs> oh. what are some um like 
I was taking mental notes. Yes, yeah. I did. You did, yeah. You're a note girl. Do you want to share a couple? I'll just leave the chat down to you guys. Sorry. Um, like taking action on your work and training. So all those hocus pocus things. I thought about <laughs> all my writing stuff. down. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that Tony needs to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does. Um, I have been doing a little bit, but I'm, yeah, that's why I watch them like every day. Like, and it's a lot of it is repeat and it's just, sure. you know, you know getting it up here and keeping it there. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's why I put as part of the challenge, I put like the implementation part, not just your aha, but what are the actual things that you're going to change about your business, right? For video. Right. Really, really key. Guys, I just told you. I would teach them almost every single day just to fill my heart and my brain. Um, but it's really easy to be to that, like we call it the analysis paralysis, right? Like getting into that um, habit of absorbing training because you feel like you're making progress with your recruitment training. You feel like you're doing the real work when you're doing the personal development. Um, so it's easy to get caught up in that where you're like, I'm doing the things, I do the things I need to do, I'm getting better, I'm learning, I'm gaining my knowledge. But if you don't ever put that knowledge <laughs> to work, it's literally a big fat waste of your time. You could have right. been drinking margaritas on your back deck. Like, you know what I mean? You might as well not listen to the meetings <laughs> if you're not going to do it. Right. And that, I'm talking to myself too. I'm not just like this. So, Megan, did you have like a single aha moment that you can share with us? Yeah, it was pretty much the same. Like I spend so much time watching all these training videos and doing all these readings and then I don't do anything with it. Yeah. I'd rather watch that last season on Netflix. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, you guys watch the that is great. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so what I want to say is because watching the training and that's that you feel like you make progress and doing the right thing. But it's easy. You don't have to be brave. You don't have to do anything scary. You don't have to go to your comfort zone. You can just absorb and it's fine and safe, right? It's actually going uh -huh. out and implementing those things that you're learning that you get into the danger zone, right? Like if that's the scary part of that. That's what I wrote down is like when he said, be willing to risk the uncertainty of putting yourself out there. Like you can do it over work. Like how much does everybody need to have that you know, the brain? Right? So I'm not saying that you're yeah. I still struggle with that sometimes. I still write down, I was literally writing down a three of the days today that I'm doing that to the opportunity. And so I was writing down my list of size. I was literally like, I would think of someone and be like, oh, like I was literally asking myself if this person belongs on my list and honestly only because I'm scared to talk to them. Because that person is intimidating me for some or I feel like they're going to think I'm um, dumb for asking them. So, like, no matter how many years you've been in it, everyone's going to get those feelings. We still get those feelings, even after we've talked to thousands of people. And I was just like, screw it. Yeah, that person needs to hear about what I have to offer. And if they don't want it, they will literally just be like, no thanks. Like, no one has ever been like, Get out of my life. I can't believe you just asked me that. Like, you had the audacity to share your, like, no one, no one has ever responded like that. But again, I just told you, like, I was still, like, worried. I still almost didn't put three people down on my list. Mine is, mine is about wording. I always feel like I'm not wording, like, do you, that I'm going to come across, like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like I got to figure out, or like, write it down and then practice it, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. So if you're talking on the phone, uh, which most people like to talk to, like, if someone called me, like, if right. you're on fire, don't call me. Um, I think you would say, you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, just don't call me if you think of any kind of a list. I will not be available. Just text me, though. Um, but if you're in person, I can see how that might be a little bit barrier but it's also almost easier because you said it sounds off each other because it's a conversation right where if you're sending it just 
of text. Cody, I will crawl this mm -hmm. to the bottom of my heart. You're freaking overthinking it. But what I usually say I know. People, I overthink everything. <laughs> yeah. We all, we're women, okay? Like, honestly, if you have the anatomy, it's what you do. But um, <laughs> what I usually say to people is honestly a variation of, have you ever considered doing this? That's it. Like, that's it. It depends on the person. Really? So, I mean, if there's someone who I'm more casual with, I'd be like, girl, there are like auto things bottom of the I think there's someone who's just like more chill or whatever. I might throw up in a curse word here or there so they like know what's actually coming from me and not just copy me. Uh, but if it's someone who's more professional than me or like proper, then I'll say something like that. Like, have you ever considered doing what I do? Have you ever considered being a consistent consultant or something like that? A variation of that, honestly. Because Mm -hmm. It's a yes or no question, but they, they have to answer it or else it's awkward, <laughs> right? Um, I don't have a lot of people who go to me on that question because it's so no pressure, right? Like it's like, and it also is focused on them. So I'm not focused on me when I say, hey, Tony, have you, or would you like to join my team today? Like that's kind of scary, sort of pushy, and a little bit fancy, right? Like that idea of joining my team where I put it on their lap and it should be something about them, not something about me, right? So if I say, have you ever considered this? Right. They either say, yes, I have, but, or no, I haven't. Like, what do you mean? Like, what? Like, a lot of people still, in 2020, <laughs> don't understand that what you can say to <laughs> They sort of think that we either work for Tennessee or that, like, I used to get people asking if I date the warmers like no. I'm not sure. I mean this is back in like 2011 and 2012. I know, dang it, I know. But after knowing me for four seconds, like how could you ask me that? <laughs> I can't even make a play dog. Like I I never mind a warmer. Um but it makes it a little bit less pressure to make it about them. Uh, but anyway, what I'm saying is they either say no I haven't, um, yes I have but so they give some kind of objection. Or they say, no, it's not for me, thanks. And then they, what, and then we carry on, right? Like either, okay, great, blah, 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 have a great day, just want to make sure you're taken care of and you know all of your available options, or, okay, cool, let's total up that six pack. Like it's something like that. It's literally zero pressure. No one gets offended by that. So I'm going to challenge both of you, because I know both of you have issues with this exact topic, like reaching out to people and not feeling gross and pushy about it, right? We don't want to feel like that right. level marketing person who's just in their lives to recruit them. Like, we don't want to feel like that. But eventually, we have to get off the building relationship mode, which is important, and on to the actual, like, taking action of building our team mode. And if you guys have been watching the recruiting videos, or if you think the Megan Woodcraft was pretty good, like, that the recruiting wasn't good in the week show, so we talked about how it's not about us in the first place, right? Recruiting, sponsoring, building, whatever you want to call it, it's about them. So we are offering them a chance to benefit in whatever way we can, right? So whether it's benefit of the product right. account or if it's a life-changing income that they're eventually going to go after. Um, we don't get to decide that for them, obviously. That's up to them. But if we are offering them a chance to do that. So if they do say no, it shouldn't be a big deal because they're saying no to the opportunity we offer them, not to us as a person. Okay? So right. what I want you guys to do, sooner rather than later, because don't overthink this, write down 10 people and reach out to them literally with that sentence or a variation of it. Okay? Hey, have you ever considered doing this? Or doing what I do? Or being a consultant or something like that? No pressure, not a big deal. And you can, of course, make it personal at the beginning. Take a lot of the signatures you cite, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Or something like that. The way that I got my group to 10 was I went to my VIP group, and then I went to my workstation, the contact tab, and I filtered my last person. Pretty much like the most prior purchase. The newest purchase up to the top. So I went to my VIP group in September and just looked at the people I haven't talked to about this specific. Yeah, and it also helps jog my memory for a couple of people who have had this conversation with me, and I skip them on my freaking list. <laughs> so I've always like told you guys, like, keep a list of everyone you talk to, and then there's 
goal to use and stop, putting people on the list. Um, but I was able to sort of be reminded of those people. I was like, I need to follow up with her. It's been like like four months since we talked about it. Um, but most of them were brand new people who I'm talking to. Okay, do you think you guys can do that? On a like yes. scale of one to ten, how scared are you? How scared? Eight. <laughs> All right. That's honest. <laughs> what about you, Megan? <laughs> Probably around like a five. Okay. I okay. feel like oh, the, the like no pressure, have you considered doing what I do thing makes it a lot less yeah. pushy and scary and gross. Okay, bye. Have a good night. You too.